it's Sarah. No. <clears throat> Hi. No, just Sarah. To, I hope you're all well. Lots of love. Just to let you know that having sat in church, they can hear us all talk at the beginning. Oh, I didn't yeah. know if you knew that, so I'm just letting you know. So that's oh. why I'm on mute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Yeah, she, she's, but lots yeah, of really love. Good. Lots of love. Oh, Jen okay. is here now. Oh, it's starting now, so we better. Yeah, OK. We can't hear her, though. Thank you. 
Gentiles received the Holy Spirit and were baptized. In those days, Jesus stood up among the leaders, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture has to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago from David concerning Jesus, who served the Christ of those who were to Jesus. He was our Diana and shared in the ministry. Yeah. 
That better? Can you hear us now? Thumbs up if you can. Oh, I've got one thumbs up. <laughs> Two thumbs ups. <laughs> the New Testament reading is from 1 John chapter 5, verses 9 to 13. God has given us eternal life in his Son. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is a testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is a testimony God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia. alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus prayed. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise Christ. to Christ our Lord.
an ancient story. Oh, we've got echoes all over the place now. Is that better? An ancient story tells of Jesus' ascension into heaven. He's met by the angel Gabriel, who asks him, now that your work is finished, what plans have you made to ensure that the truth you brought to earth will be spread throughout the world? Jesus answered, well, I called some fishermen and some tax collectors to walk along with me as I did my father's will. Yes, yes, I know about them, said Gabriel. But what other plans have you made? Jesus replied, well, I taught Peter, James and John about the kingdom of God. I taught Thomas about faith and all of them were with me as I healed and preached to the multitudes. Gabriel began to lose patience. Really, now this is all very well and good, but surely you must have other plans to make sure that your work was not in vain. Jesus fixed Gabriel with a steady gaze and said with finality, I have no other plans. I am depending on them. Jesus said he was depending on the disciples, depending on them to spread the message of love, mercy and compassion to the entire world. Depending on them, as he said in the Great Commission in Matthew, to go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and lo, I am with you to the close of all the age. Jesus was depending on the disciples, but he wouldn't leave them alone. He promised them help through one who he promised them help through one who would come to give them the needed power to spread the message. The disciples knew this. Jesus had told them. But they'd just seen Jesus rise into heaven. They'd just seen their friend, their teacher, their Lord leave them. On the one hand, this was a glorious event, for now they were certain that Jesus was with the Father. Now they knew for sure that Jesus was indeed the Son of God, and now they knew for sure that Jesus and the Father really were at one. But on the other hand, the disciples must all have felt very confused, alone and lost. They must have wondered what on earth was going to happen next. If this was the end or just the beginning, as Jesus had promised, they probably felt frightened, insecure and very perplexed. Today, in the church year, is a day of waiting, a time of reflection, a time to stop, to ponder, to listen quietly, to pray, to feel, to experience, to wait and to wonder. We're asked to join the first disciples, to reflect upon the significance of what they'd witnessed and what it means to us. And the crucial thing to reflect upon is Jesus' high priestly prayer for his disciples, his prayer for all of us today. Jesus wanted the disciples to believe in his promises and teaching because he knew that after his ascension, they would need the power of the Spirit to carry out his work. So he prays that they would remain true to the Father and remain in the faith. The disciples were in a liminal state, a time of transition, an in-between time. The risen Christ had ascended, but the Spirit had not yet descended. The world was never going to be the same for any of them. They tried to cling to things they'd known, whilst realising that things were no longer what they had been before. 
It demanded that they rethink their priorities, reorder their lives and reconstitute their community. They'd been commissioned to continue the works and teachings of Jesus and all in a time of great uncertainty. It would have been so easy for the disciples to forget all that Jesus had taught them, to go back to the fishing boats thinking it was all over, reasoning that it was good while it lasted, but Jesus is gone and we're alone. There's nothing more for us to do. Let's go back to something we know, something we can do. In their fishing boats, Disciples would be back in familiar territory. They'd know how to harness the power of the wind to sail the boat. They would have the knowledge and the wisdom to use the power and the equipment. They could have easily cast off and set sail out into the waters. But the disciples had been given a new job to do. They had the power from Jesus. They had the mission spelled out. They had the tools at hand, but they didn't know how to use them. They didn't know how to set sail. They were out of their comfort zone and in unfamiliar territory. They needed the Pentecost experience. They needed the guidance of the Spirit and they needed the power of the Spirit to get their boat sailing in the breeze. Jesus prayed that while they waited for all this, they would be drawn together before they started properly in their mission, that they wouldn't lose faith, that they would remain in the Father. We can learn much from this sequence of events. Jesus also prays for us to remain in the faith as we face the in-between times of our lives. Jesus may have departed from this world, but not without radically transforming it and not without leaving reassurance of God's love and protection for those who remain in faith. It's quite a tender moment. Jesus prays for us. He prays that we might be upheld and embraced in God's unfailing love as we journey through our earthly life. Jesus knew the obstacles and the challenges that we would face, the disappointments, the failures, the hostility, the sadness, the darkness that we all might experience. He prayed for us that we might live in the love that he initiated and allow it to radiate from us. He prayed that the world would remain in faith and remain true to our Heavenly Father. We live in this world and to be in this world fully committed to its duties and opportunities, but not conformed to its values. It's not an easy task. How to hold these two senses in balance isn't a new problem. It existed in the New Testament, keeping the worldly in tension with the unworldly. We are required to go on living in this world for our allotted time. But as Christians, we live in this world believing that this isn't our final destiny. But that when our time comes, we too will take our place in the eternal kingdom. All of us, at some time, have experienced insecurity in our faith. When we're not quite sure what's going to happen next, not quite sure what the future holds for us, not knowing where we're going to get the strength to carry on. 
It's in these kinds of situations that these words of Jesus cry out to us. When we're in darkness, when we face uncertainty, when we cannot get our boat sailing, that is when Jesus' prayer is a poignant reminder that we still have a relationship with Christ. We still have faith. We are still embraced in God's love and protection. He says, remain in faith and believe in me. I will give you the power to see you through. I will be with you. As those words were comforting to the disciples, they are also comforting to us. As a church, we are charged to carry on the commission given to the disciples. We have all the power from Jesus. We have our mission spelled out. We have the tools at hand. But like the disciples, we don't always know how to use them. We don't always know how we can set sail. And like the disciples, we're drawn together as Christ's body to support, encourage, and pray for each other. And God's Spirit is here among us. We aren't left alone. So this, in between time, allows us time for reflecting on all that God has done for us and taught us through Christ. A time for prioritizing and reordering. A time for experiencing the very real touch of Christ in our lives. And a time for remembering that Jesus prays for us. Jesus has no other plans. He's depending on us. But how ready are we to rise to the challenge? Amen. We renew our commitment to our reigning Lord. Let us affirm the faith of the church, which Christ commissions us to share with the world. Do you believe and trust in God, the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we all exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May Almighty God strengthen this faith within us and equip and enable us to share it with others. Amen. Thank you, Paul. We pray for the church and for the world. 
Lord, we give thanks that we can see the opening up of society in the coming days. And give thanks for the efforts and skills of all those who delivered the great success of the vaccination programme. We pray that the new variants of the virus will not force us to retreat from this position. Make us all cautious as we seek to re-engage with those around us. We pray for all those whose lives are blighted by conflict and war. We think particularly of Palestine and Israel at this time. Lord, it was in conflict when you walked there and it feels like it's not changed much. We hope that the leaders of the nations can bring pressure to bear so that the ceasefire, a ceasefire and eventual end to the seemingly endless conflict between Arab and Jew may come to pass. We pray for other parts of the world where conflict rages and oppression is the order of the day. Thinking specifically of Yemen, Myanmar, Syria and Belarus. Lord, pour out your spirit on all those involved that they may be enlightened, lay down their arms and turn to you, allowing peace to flow in accordance with your will. We give thanks for all of the acts of kindness and grace that are going on in, in, the, in your world on a daily basis, knowing that some of them and the light they bring vastly exceeds all the acts of darkness. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for our families and friends. Lord, give grace to our families and friends and all whom we have contact with in our daily lives. We give thanks for all those who have shown us love and support. Help us to remember to reach out to and support them, following in your example to serve. Each person's experience of the last year has been different. May we be sensitive and supportive in our encounters with others, never assuming that all is well with them because it is with us. As the world moves to a more positive mindset, due to the success of the vaccination program, we pray for all those who continue to find lockdown extremely difficult. We know that the relaxation of measures will not be like throwing a switch and that many will continue to be anxious and confused. May they receive the support they need and have strength to reach out for help when needed. Help us to stay aware and be proactive in our efforts to assist when we can. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, comfort and heal those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Lord, we know that your will and indeed design is towards wholeness and healing. Our bodies are structured that way and it is easy to take it for granted. Keeping this absolute truth in mind, Lord, we lift all those to you who are suffering throughout the world. The world has been consumed by its fight against COVID and this has left many feeling neglected, let down as they struggle against other illnesses. We lift to you those who are currently facing delays and worry as they wait for treatment following the extreme stress put on the health provisions of the world. May all those involved in reducing the delays and increasing the supply of resources receive all they need. Help us to be your supporting hands where we can and keep all those who are in distress in our prayers. Strengthen all those whose work it is to preserve life and heal the sick. We give particular thanks for all those whose work it is to find new treatments and cures. Help them to see and solve the complex problems in your creation and find ways to mend that which went wrong and by doing so reinstate your original intent. May they be blessed with insight and the resources they need. We give thanks for our NHS. May the desire to support it go beyond the current crisis and reshape government priorities in future, ensuring that we don't slip back into a selfish business as usual mindset. Let us in a moment of silence, lift up those who we know are sick or troubled at this time.
Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who have died and those who mourn them. The virus has killed more than twice the total UK civilians who lost their lives in the Second World War. If each soul is mourned by 10 others, then we are living in a land with two and a quarter million fellow citizens who are grieving. Help us to be ports in their storm, getting alongside them in their time of need, with no agenda save to love and support them in their grief. Lord, comfort those who are going through the confusion and pain of bereavement brings. Help them to know that they are not alone and lean on you at this time. In a moment of silence, let us lift to God those who we know have been recently bereaved. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son and Saviour, Jesus Christ. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they, went, they were glad when they saw the Lord. 
The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's turn around and give each other a cheery wave of peace. A cheery wave of peace to you at home as well. <laughs> now, can you still hear me at home? Only we, we had a bit of a squeaking noise. Well, it wasn't even squeaking noise going on. So I've turned things off and turned other things on. So who knows who's going to hear now? But if you can lip read, you'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord our God. Right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourselves. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice of sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of you. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son, as we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise, and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God. 
who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be here. If the people in church would please remain seated during the distribution and those people at home sing along to a nice piece of music we're about to play for you.
And so we pray. God, our Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, gives the water of eternal life, may we thirst for you, the spring of life and source of goodness. Through him who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Notices. They are as written up there. Christian Aid Week is finishing today. Yes, it is. Um, so if you've had an envelope and you don't quite know where to put it, um, there's a bucket on your way out or you can drop it through the vicarage door. I am assured that Poppy won't eat it. Uh, home group is on Monday. Is that your one, Diana? Yeah? Zoom. You're Zooming on Monday. Mother's Union meeting on Zoom. On Zoom on Tuesday. Coffee and chat. In reality. Wow. God, it's a long time since we've been able to say that, isn't it? <laughs> and next Sunday is a very important Sunday because it's the church APCM or the AGM as it used to be called in previous. It's when all the, the legal and important stuff gets voted on, uh, your new church wardens get voted in and besides people and things like that. If you can't attend and actually be here, then please try and join on Zoom if you can. So the way that we're getting around it is having the APCM as part of the church service. And the two will then go hand in hand, as no doubt you remember from last year. Are there any other notices that anyone can think of? No? Fantastic. And so, we go on to the light up the world with prayer again. Again, please join if you would like to during the week on the uh, website advertised. And now we're going to have our final hymn, which is crown him with many crowns. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
As we wait in silence, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we listen to your word, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we worship you in majesty, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your refreshing, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your renewing, make us ready in your coming spirit. As we long for your equipping, make us ready for your coming spirit. As we long for your empowering, make us ready for your coming spirit. God the Father who has given to his Son the name above every name, Strengthen you to proclaim Christ Jesus as Lord. Amen. God the Son, who is our great high priest, passed into heaven. Plead for you at the right hand of the Father. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who pours out his abundant gifts upon the church, make you faithful servants of Christ our King. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love, the living and the departed, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you very much for being so patient with me this morning. Now is the time to confess that I'm wearing new glasses for the first time and was struggling to read some of the things, but I will get used to these new very focals at some stage. And a confession, I've not actually conducted a service for what must be nearly two years. So, and this is my first one here. <laughs> Well done. 
So I was feeling very much the new girl this morning. <laughs> so lovely to see you all. Lovely to see you all at home. You can rush off and put your kettles on. I think you're left on for a few minutes so you can have a little chat if you want to. But we're going to rush home and get coffee now. Take care. God bless. God bless you. Thank you, Jen. Thank you.